All right, welcome to episode two of the Whiskey Vault, which is what we decided to call it. So um, today I'm gonna drag Rex onto camera with me, which I know you've been eagerly anticipating, and uh, you're in for a you're in, this is a letdown. It is. What are you doing? <laughs> You're setting the bar too high. <laughs> Come on, sit down. God. Son of a, I don't I'm making you sit here. I don't get paid enough for this. Because uh, it, the true test of what I'm about to say is when I'm sitting next to Rex and he's giving me crap about this. And notice that I said, crap. Yeah. Yeah, that's because uh, after yesterday, I had a few key family members say, uh, hey, maybe you should tone down the whole non-stop cussing on camera thing. Yeah, well I think that's a great idea because it fits very nicely <laughs> with your pansy <laughs> demeanor. Hey, you know what? Mother <laughs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> you are the mother oh. We're like fifth, grader, fifth graders that just, just discovered curse words. <laughs> yeah, we really are. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Chad, that's gonna be your problem, the first part of this video. <laughs> the guy that has to bleep stuff is right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so, today we are going to do the Irishman Founders Reserve. Now, that's different from the Irishman Single Malt because this is a blend, actually, and by blend I don't mean a blended whiskey, I mean that it's a mix of two different styles of Irish whiskey, one being Single Malt, which is all barley, that's all that means. And the other one, single pot still. I don't know what that has to do with anything. Should I be excited about this one? You should. Okay. You should. Now I'm gonna explain why, because I've, as I looked up into a little research on Walsh, which I've been doing recently, mm -hmm. I got a little more excited about these whiskeys because we have at work an artist in Bernard Walsh who is trying to recreate whiskeys that were common and beloved in the uh, 19th century. So this is a time machine. Is yes. What you're me. Okay. Now, single pot still is an Irish whiskey term, which means they are making. Uh, well, it dates back to when the English started trying to tax the Irish out of existence by you know, the way they tried everybody. Yes, they yeah. tend because it do worked that. so well everywhere else around the world. Yeah. And, um, but that did give us America. <laughs> it just did. <laughs> and uh, anyway, so they started taxing the percentage of malted barley used in the whiskeys. Yeah. So the Irish is sort of a screw you to the man. Mm -hmm. They said, uh, okay, so we'll start using a percentage of unmalted barley in our products, thus cutting the taxes down, but keeping the same quantity of product. Okay. That was their middle finger to the man. So you've taken so, something as cool as whiskey and you've talked about taxes. I know, right? Yeah. So not, no. what I talked about was screw the man. <laughs> That's what I talked about. Right. They tried to get taxed and the Irish were like, aha. Uh -huh. You're taxing malted barley, huh? So by the way, you need to bleep and blur out the fingers. Yeah, that's right. That's we'll do the English version. <laughs> so uh, no, first, uh, one of the things I heard about smelling whiskeys is you do it with your mouth open. Yep. Why? Yeah, you do that because otherwise, okay, think of you were driving a car and you crack one window yep. and you get that really weird ear buffet sound, your yep. ears popping. Yep. Okay, it's the same kind of thing in that uh, it's not voodoo and or it doesn't increase your nose's ability to smell, it just creates a, a pass through, a vapor. It opens a second window. Yes, it opens a second window in the car. So if you have your mouth closed, you're inhaling alcohol vapors and they're just building up in your sinus cavity. Okay. And so all you smell is alcohol. Because it, I do notice the difference. Yeah. Now, if you open your mouth, those harsh vapors pass through a little bit yeah. and you'll get to smell more of the actual whiskey. Okay. Now, I, in terms of the smell, I, I've smelled this scores of times before. I don't think there's anything special I'm supposed to be smelling here unless you... No, nope, this is classic Irish whiskey. Okay. If anything, this is the kind of whiskey that the more famous ones that everybody knows in the States, like Bushmills, Jameson, these ones, they're all sort of modeled after the idea of this original Irish whiskey. Okay. So um, they're is... using grain blends, not like this, but... I'm tasting now. I'm done smelling. Yeah. Now, nothing is jumping out at me. It shouldn't. 
Yeah. These whiskeys back in the day were were known for being freakishly smooth. Yeah. And beautiful, friendly. You know you want to say it. Dolphin smooth. There you go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> t-shirts. We're making t-shirts. Um Dolphin smooth. I lost my train of thought because dolphin smooth. You're talking about how it's okay. So yeah, they're known to be super smooth. There's nothing jumping out. No, not yeah. at all. Yeah. Now uh, yesterday we had the single malt, and the single malt, uh, unlike Scottish single malts, which traditionally were smoked. Yeah. Uh, not the case with Irish single malt, and so you don't get that heavy smoke flavors in Irish single malt. Right. The way that in uh, some a lot of American single malts you wouldn't get it. Unless they're intentionally going out of their way to make Scottish style single malt. Okay. Now, there's only a few peated Irish whiskeys. Only one that I know of offhand. I'm sure there's more than one, but Conmara, which I don't actually have and need to get in here. Right. Uh, but this is this would be 30% single malt, pure barley. Yeah. Right. And 70% that uh, pot still whiskey, which is part malted and part right. unmalted. I. I'm not in love with this. I like it. I think for no other reason than it's just easy and it's there. There's nothing jumping out at me that I think would be memorable. Right. But if I'm just looking for something classic, right, something that's just going to be a nice background drink, it's not the, the, the centerpiece of the experience, then yeah, it's good. It's not blowing my mind, but it's good. I would agree with that. I, uh, as is well known now, I much prefer the really aggressive, smoky, com complicated, in my mind, Scottish whiskeys. Mm -hmm. And so Irish whiskey I drink uh, typically when I'm in the mood to just not have to deal with what I'm drinking, just to simply enjoy it. I like whiskeys uh, more often than not that have a bit of smoke. There's no smoke here. That's because I'm the one who made you start drinking whiskey more. Yeah, you broke me early. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could quit you. <laughs> Why'd you have to make it weird? We were doing so well. You just had to make it weird. That's, uh, uh, it was just sitting there mm. waiting to be said. So anyway, that's your first introduction. Tomorrow, I will introduce you to another variation of their whiskey called... Writer's Tears. Okay. So till then, may your crazy stay this side illegal, and may you return to us before we have time to miss you. Cheers. <laughs>